Morning Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Dominica's president re-elected for another term amid controversy. Our top story, be, story in Caribbean Newsline for Monday, October 1st from the CMC News Center in Bridgetown. I'm Dawn Paris. Good evening. President Charles Angelo Savrin was Monday re-elected to serve as Dominica's head of state for a second five-year term, even as opposition legislators staged a walkout in protest at what they said was the unconstitutionality of the entire process. Speaker Alex Boyd Knight said all 20 legislators who were present when the vote was taken showed their support for Savrin, a former trade unionist, diplomat, and government minister who's been president since 2013. Before the vote, opposition leader Lennox Linton had argued that the election was taking place during the 14 day period designated for nomination of candidates. He had urged that the parliament be adjourned until Friday. The Constitution, not Lennox Linton, not Roosevelt Skerritt, not any one of the members inside here, prescribes a 14-day period for nomination. In that 14-day period, the Prime Minister can nominate someone, the Leader of the Opposition can nominate someone, and any three members of this House acting together by writing under their hand can nominate somebody to be President. That period has not elapsed, and the Constitution provides no authority for any election of a President within the nomination period prescribed by the Constitution. And so our actions today will be ultra-virus. The Constitution will be a violation of the constitutional provisions, and I'm asking us not to proceed in that direction. Do the right thing and reschedule the sitting to consider the, the election of a president on Friday of this week. Well, Attorney General Levi Peter cited court cases to show that the government was on good ground in nominating Sovereign and holding the election during the sitting of the Parliament. He said Linton had not submitted a nominee for the position as he said he would. Why we didn't act earlier? Um, the letter that I have seen a copy of from the Leader of the Opposition to the Prime Minister stated, Madam Speaker, among other things, that the Leader of the Opposition for election as, as President, a, a, candidate, a candidate for joint nomination, Madam Speaker, a candidate, this is the Leader of the Opposition's letter, candidate for joint nomination by the prime, prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition for election as President will be proposed, not maybe, will be proposed at the end of the period of consultation within the next 15 days. Madam Speaker, as far as I am aware, from the mouth of the Leader of the Opposition himself, no nomination for, of a candidate for President has been provided by the Leader of the Opposition. Earlier, the Speaker had ordered opposition member for Roseau North, Danny Lugay, out of the chamber following his outburst as Atter the Attorney General spoke. Even as he was escorted out by the Sergeant at Arms, he was insisting the process was illegal. Please go outside. No, the member is on his feet. You can't have two members on their feet. Take your seat, please. I'll call on you. No control of himself. Over in Trinidad and Tobago, the government on Monday presented a 51.7 TT billion dollar budget 
outlining new taxes, improved tax collection measures, and a host of new initiatives to safeguard the disabled community and senior citizens, among others. In a three-hour presentation, Finance Minister Com Inbert said the prospects for the country are bright and the Keith Rowley government had been able to turn around the economy over the past three years and avoid going to the International Monetary Fund. Imbert told legislators that total expenditure for the fiscal period 2019 will continue to be contained in keeping with the policies of the government. He said grants and pensions are set to be increased on the first day of the new year. I propose to increase the value of the food card to support the most vulnerable in our society. For households with one to three persons, from $410 per month to $510 per month. For households with four to five persons, from $550 per month to $650 per month. For households with six or more persons, from $700 a month to $800 a month. Madam Speaker, the increase in the value of the food card will cost an additional $29.2 million annually and will impact 24,330 wow. deserving households. This measure will take effect on January 1st, 2019. Disability grant. Again, redistributing income. Again, to support those least able to support themselves. We propose, we propose to remove the age eligibility for the disability grant under the Public Assistance Act to allow children under the age of 18 to access the grant. Staying in Trinidad and Tobago, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley led his team red in a total sweep of the internal polls of the People's National Movement on Sunday. Campaign manager Rohan Sinanen said the victory was an endorsement of the political leader. The slate had included Finance Minister Com Imbert, who contested the chairmanship of the party. Other successful candidates included Public Utilities Minister Robert Lohunt as Vice Chairman and Forrester Cummings as General Secretary. Apart from Rowley, the other con uncontested posts were that of Lady Vice Chairman held by Planning and Development Minister Camille Robinson Regis and Labor Relations Officer held by Labor Minister Jennifer Baptiste Primus. During the campaign, Rowley had called for total endorsement of his team. Over in Bermuda, opposition leader Craig Cannonier has been confirmed as the new leader of the One Bermuda Alliance, the OBA. The party said on Monday that the 55-year-old businessman who was sworn in as opposition leader a week ago is now also the leader of the party. No other nominations for the post of a OBA party leader were received by Monday's noon deadline, so Cannonier was elected by acclamation. He says the OBA must now change course and carry on what it started in 2012 when it was elected to government before suffering a crushing defeat at the hands of the Progressive Labour Party in last year's elections. Cannonier thanked his predecessor, Jean Atherden, for her efforts during her tenure as party leader. Atherden resigned as OBA leader last month after eight of the party's 11 MPs registered a vote of no confidence in her leadership. And with Cannonier now confirmed party leader, former Premier Michael Dunkley said it's time to rebuild the OBA. He said the party has gone through a difficult period since the last election and now it's time to bring renewed energy and enthusiasm to the important work that must be done. In other news, some small marijuana farmers in Jamaica are fearful that investors in the island's ganja industry won't treat them fairly and they're questioning whether the Jamaica Cannabis Licensing Authority will implement measures to protect them from being bullied out of the industry. We get more in this TVJ News report. The biggest problem for small farmers in the local ganja industry. Some have the land and a plan for the ganja, but the lack of scientific expertise for testing. As a result, some have been searching for partners overseas. While they do that, Others remain hesitant. Cannabis expert Montel Williams wants those persons to weigh the pros and cons. Zero percent of, of, of nothing is nothing. So start thinking about what a partnership is worth to you and acknowledge that person for what they bring to the table also. That may be true, 
But at least one local farmer says while investor support is critical to development and growth of the sector, the Cannabis Licensing Authority must do more. Too much people I've seen come back to Canada and talk about, oh, I'm going to get Jamaican ganja for a dollar. You know how much people have to, have to suffer and bleed and sweat for you to get one dollar a ganja? You feel good about that? That can't go on anymore. We're not going to allow that. And with concerns that small farmers may be bullied out of the ganja industry, Vice President of Canadian publication Marijuana Business Daily, Chris Walsh, offered this suggestion to the government. Create something into the program that benefits small growers. It could be a type of license, so a small tier license that gives them an opportunity to get into this regulated market. If you don't craft that into your regulations, is what happens is the big companies eventually dominate everything and then it becomes like every other industry where there's a couple big players and that's it. The last thing they want to do is put this brand new, potentially thriving industry that could put Jamaica at the center of a brand new sector and put that into the hands of three or four businesses. Still to come in Caribbean news line, some good news for Dominica as it seeks to become the world's first climate resilient nation. Stay with us. This month on Caribbean Passport, dive into the creative world, fashion, music, festivals, and cuisine. So get your passports ready and let's travel. All coming up on this channel. Dominica's World Creole Music Festival in 2018, October 26, 27, 28 at the Windsor Park Stadium in the capital city, Roseau. Three nights over eight genres, 40 years of independence, one location, Do Dominica, the 20th edition of Dominica's World Creole Music Festival. For more information, like our Facebook page, Dominica Festivals. Visit our website, www.dominicafestivals.com for all travel, accommodation, and ticketing details. My love, my home, my Dominica, building a resilient nation. See you there. Proudly sponsored by the government of Dominica and Discover Dominica Authority. The World Bank on Monday said it's providing 31 million U.S. dollars in additional funding to finance disaster prevention in Dominica. The bank said the funds will go towards an ongoing project for building resilient infrastructure and strengthening capacity to manage disaster risk in the Eastern Caribbean car country, which was hit by Hurricane Maria just over a year ago. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt said the project is part of a larger $115 million US dollar package of support from the World Bank for hurricane response. They had approved a significant portion of that for agriculture and housing, and the balance had to go to the uh, board for its uh, consideration, which is about $31 million US dollars. And we're very pleased with the fact that the World Bank has uh, found favor with our, our application as a country and that they have approved that, that additional $31 million, which will go towards infrastructure, and infrastructure more specifically in the east of Dominica, in the Canalago territory, going to Atkinson, um, going to Pitit Sufre, Cassie Bruce, San Sauve, uh, Morpo, Deepa, all of these areas will benefit um, dramatically f uh, um, for, from these funds. As you know, there are some moves ongoing in, in this part of the country um, under the, the, the DVRP program. And so that is an additional sum which would um, address um, some issues there in the east. Because, you know, this part of the country can become challenged during disaster time. And we have to build more resilience and, and adaptation, adaptation in those areas. Well, one year after Anguilla was severely impacted by another hurricane, Irma, Chief Minister Victor Banks says he's pleased with the progress the island has made. He says he's satisfied with the recovery, especially compared to other places that are still suffering as a result of Irma's hit. 
That hurricane was the strongest storm on record in the open Atlantic region and claimed at least 130 lives as it made its way through the Leicester Antilles in September last year. It left 64.76 billion U.S. dollars in damage, making it the fifth costliest tropical cyclone on record. But one year later, Banks is happy to report that the electricity grid in Anguilla and the island's telecommunications services are operating again. The airport is, is functional and uh, we are preparing to accept um, night flights. Uh, so generally, um, I think that we've come a long way. Um, uh, we've restored uh, ourselves to a level of normalcy. Uh, the, um, the community is, is, is getting it together. Uh, homes are being rebuilt, repaired, and they are still a small group of persons, uh, especially persons who who had challenges with their homes even before Hurricane um, Irma that we still have to provide some assistance for. While Banks says the population was generally prepared, he observed that too many people waited until the last minute to get themselves ready. The chief minister tells CMC News the preparation took place over a shorter period than is advisable, and he thinks the island needs to put preparedness programs in place much earlier. Relief programs, I think that in terms of um, ensuring that citizens got the needed supplies, I, I, I think that we had um, supplies, but they were not sufficient for the kind of event that took place, and the distribution network need to be, needs to be improved uh, a little better. Uh, of course, there were reasons why we had those challenges. Um, because the road networks were not in place, because the number of persons who were involved in the program themselves um, were facing some serious challenges. And, and generally speaking, I think that at the end of the day, uh, that aspect of the program needs to be carefully researched. And uh, the lessons learned in, in terms of preparedness for the aftermath that, that, um, that have, will be useful for us going forward. Several Caribbean countries were rattled as two earthquakes hit the region within a six-hour period between Sunday night and Monday morning. The University of the West Indies Seismic Research Center says the first quake with a magnitude of 4.0 was felt in Martinique, Dominica and St. Lucia. That occurred Sunday night at 9.20 p.m. A 3.3 magnitude quake occurred at 3.35 a.m. on Monday and was located 20 kilometers northeast of St. George's Grenada. 107 kilometers southwest of Kingston, St. Vincent, and 159 kilometers northwest of Tobago's capital. The Seismic Research Center said there were no reports of injuries immediately or damages caused by the earthquakes, and the latest, which were the latest in a series of tremors felt in several Caribbean countries. The SRC has been warning the region to be prepared for a major quake. Just last month, Trinidad and Tobago recorded a 6.9 magnitude quake that caused infrastructural damage to several buildings. Ahead in Newsline Sport, rain ruins the third T20 international between West Indies and South Africa. Stay with us. This hurricane tip comes to you complements the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency and the Caribbean Media Corporation. Be prepared. Take photos of important documents and secure them in waterproof containers or bags. Imagine a tropical getaway where you can indulge in unsurpassed cuisine, culture and adventure this side of the hemisphere at a special rate. Fall for Barbados this October and dive into the rich offerings of the Caribbean Sea or hear the stirring melodies of jazz at the Elan Trotman Jazz Excursion. Explore fine dining with our world-renowned Barbados Food and Rum Festival. Journey to our many attractions. There is so much to see and do in Barbados this October. Book today with code hashtag 4BGI.
bit about what sports are going on at the Sports Fest. Sure. Uh, this is the ninth year of Sports Fest, and we've got, of course, uh, EVP uh, Tour here, Sand Volleyball. We've also got behind us uh, Pro Water Cross, uh, Jet Ski Racing on the Kanawha River. Continuing with sports now, a soggy outfield at the Brian Lara Stadium in Trinidad forced the abandonment of the third 2020 international between West Indies women and South Africa on Sunday. The match was carded to begin at 4 p.m., but the impaired outfield resulting from rain ensured that the players remained off the field. Inspections by officials at 4 p.m. and then again at 5.45 p.m. failed to bring any good news as conditions remained unfit for play. West Indies lead the five-match series 2-0 after winning the opening match by 17 runs last Monday at Kensington Oval in Barbados and taking the second game by nine wickets last Friday in Trinidad. The fourth T20 International is set for Thursday, also at the Brian Lara Stadium. Well, in that second T20 eye on Friday, it was Anissa Mohamed's spectacular hat trick that paved the way for an easy West Indies victory. The 30-year-old all-time leading T20 wicket-taker grabbed the ninth hat-trick in women's T20 eyes off the last three balls of the innings to help limit the South Africans to just 101 for eight in their 20 overs. TV6's Vinod Narwani reports. After beating South Africa in the first game of the series, the Windies were looking to do more damage in Trinidad. The Proteas made a poor start as Lizza Lee was caught of the bowling of Haley Matthews for a duck. Matthews struck again, furniture disturbed, and South Africa were in trouble. Dane Van Niekirk and Mignon Dupreeze were the main contributors, putting on a partnership of 50 for the fourth wicket. Of spinner Anissa Mohammed did the damage with the ball by having Dupreeze caught by Taylor for 27. Van Niekirk was caught in the deep for a top score of 36, another one for Mohammed. Marizan Cap was stumped to give Mohammed her third wicket. Sarah Smith was bowled by Mohammed for naught. Mohammed took a hat-trick to finish with a fifer by removing Massa Bata class for zero. South Africa were restricted to 101 for eight. When the Windies replied, Matthews and Natasha McLean put on 30 for the first wicket before Matthews was out for 17 in the seventh over. But McLean and skipper Stefani Taylor tormented the South Africans with an unbroken stand of 72 for the second wicket. They cantered to 102 for one in 15.3 overs to win by nine wickets with McLean not out on 42 and Taylor unbeaten on 35. The Caribbean side leads the five game series 2-0. Meanwhile, Mohammed says the team is banking on a series sweep to send a warning to teams coming to the Caribbean for the T20 World Cup. TTT's Kent Fuentes tells us more. As it was great to be back amongst the wickets and even better to have picked up her first hat trick in front of a home crowd, especially on a night that had significant meaning to her. It feels great to get my first hat-trick at home in front of my home crowd. Um, it was my third five-wicket haul. I was really pleased with my performance today. And to be honest, today I wanted to really perform because this is the first time my grandfather actually came to see me play after 16 years. This is the, this is the first time that he actually see me play live. With three matches to go, the talented spin bowler says her team wants to sweep the series. Um, it's good to go 2-0 up in the series, um, but it's never over. We still want to go 5-0. Um, coming up, we have to defend our World Cup, so it's good to see that we can win games from now on. Hopefully, hopefully we can take that all the way through and defend our World Cup. The West Indies will defend their T20 World Cup title on home soil in November. And Mohammed believes this is something that can work in their favor. Um, we're really excited to play the T20 World Cup and defend our title at home. We have a really good record playing at home. We have won most of our matches playing at home. And just knowing that the fans will be coming out and looking at us, that is motivating us to go out there and defend our title. Mercedes secured the top two spots for Sunday's Russian Grand Prix with Valtteri Bottas edging teammate Lewis Hamilton to take pole position. Bottas edged Hamilton by 0.145 seconds after the world champion made mistakes in the middle sector on both his laps in the final top 10 shootout. The result was only his second pole of the season. While well, still in motorsports, a Jamaican-born karting racer has made it into the top three spots in the world following podium finishes on the international circuit. We get more in this TVJ News report.
Alex Powell, the son of one of the region's top rally drivers, John, has been representing the Caribbean with pride, ending the season as the third-ranked mini-class carter in Europe. The young Powell, who's been karting for 18 months, has stomped his authority among the world's best drivers in the Minimax class. It means a lot because, I mean, I started when I was seven and I didn't know that I would be this good in three years. Powell's first taste of major success came on June 24 during the first leg of the WSK Open Cup Championships in Brescia, Italy, where he placed third overall. Just over a month later, on July 29, he placed fifth overall after one third place and two fourth place finishes on the second leg of the championship at the Adrian Raceway, also in Italy. Powell's biggest success over the four-month period came at the Panamanian Rock Cup in Colombia on August 19, where he recorded two first place finishes. Powell, who ended the season with another third overall finish, on the final leg of the WSK Open Cup in South Italy, was surprised by his world ranking. Young Powell, who now lives in Europe and attends the Max Verstappen Driving Academy, has long-term dreams of driving in Formula One like Britain's Lewis Hamilton. I think next year, next year I will move up a category, and I think in the next three years I'll go into Formula Four. I guess being around so many um, drivers like Montoya's, uh, Juan Pablo Montoya's son, um, Fittipaldi's son, um, Stensoni's son. There are a lot of ex-world uh, Formula One drivers, NASCAR drivers, rally drivers that are in go-karting now at this early age. That he has developed friendships with them and he um, is looking at something different. His coach is um, coach Max Verstappen and um, Sebastian Vettel. So. You know, it's, I guess it's only natural that he would want to look to do that. Meanwhile, David Somerwell Jr., the president of the Jamaica Karting Association, who invited Alex to Jamaica, says his performance in Europe will now open doors for more local carters. And that sports, we'll be right back. Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing, Inc. This month on Caribbean Passport, dive into the creative world, fashion, music, festivals, and cuisine. So get your passports ready and let's travel. All coming up on this channel. A recap of the major developments of this day, President Charles Savrin re-elected to serve as Dominica's head of state despite strong obje objections from the opposition and in sport, rain forces West Indies women and South Africa women to abandon the third match of their T20 International Series. That's Caribbean Newsline for news and sport around the clock. Log on to cardinalnews.com and for more of our programming, log on to Caribvision TV and subscribe to Caribvision's YouTube channel. We'll be back here again tomorrow, but from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching and good night.